Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining Digital Drafting Systems today in the afternoon to for this wonderful webcast, What is New in AutoCAD 2020? Um, before we jump in, I wanted to um, mention a few logistics things like the lines are muted so that we can hear the presenter well. Um, please write your questions in the questions box, in the chat box. We will be able to um, answer the questions if they are simple uh, along the way, or at the end, the presenter will answer uh, if they are like content wise, okay? The webcast is recorded, so we will send that link later on. And if you have any questions as usual, you can send it to info at ddscad.com, or you can even call us. Uh, not while the presentation, because you have to pay attention. Uh, all right, so it is my honor, my pleasure. And my name is Raquel, by the way, for those that don't know my accent. But uh, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce you to the presenter today. She is a world-renowned global technology evangelist, Ling Allen. Ling, take it away. Okay, thank you. Oh, I always love listening to you, Raquel. And thank you and, and welcome to everybody uh, today. We're gonna be learning all about the new features inside of AutoCAD 2020. So if you've already made the move to 2020, this will give you a chance to see the new features and hopefully I will inspire you to actually use the new features. That would be great. And for those of you who haven't made the move yet, this will give you a chance to see what's in the release. All right, so it will educate you some. And uh, just kind of in general, taking a look at AutoCAD, uh, there it comes with uh, so many great things now, which I, I get very excited about. Uh, I'm going to be discussing the latest, the latest features that are actually inside of the program. All right, and I'm also going to be talking about the specialized tool sets because with AutoCAD 19, 2019, and AutoCAD 2020, they also included those AutoCAD verticals like AutoCAD architecture and AutoCAD mechanical. So we'll take a look at those. That's like huge. That's such a big deal. And then we'll also take a look at web and mobile. All right, so you can use AutoCAD on the go. So that's what we're going to be covering today. And I'm going to start off with the latest features because those are always my favorite part. That's probably your favorite part too. <laughs> so, so if you've uh, ever done a purge, which I like to believe almost all of you have inside of AutoCAD because you wanted to clean up your drawings, right? You want your drawings to be nice and clean without a bunch of extra objects. Uh, you have no doubt at some point in time run into a situation where you have had objects or things like layers that you could not purge. And it could be very frustrating because it doesn't tell you why you can't get rid of it, or maybe it gave you a little hint why you couldn't get rid of specific objects, why you couldn't purge specific objects, uh, but you didn't know what objects were getting in the way, especially when it comes to layers, right? Super frustrating. Here you have a layer that you want to get rid of, and as far as you can tell, there's nothing on it. You've turned off all the other layers. You can't find anything on it. And you go to purge it and it's like, nope, you can't purge it. It's being used. You're like, what? How's it possibly being used? Well, with the new purge redesign, it will not only uh, tell you why you can't purge it. It's going to let you, it's going to highlight the objects that are causing you grief. So then in the situation with the layer, you could actually delete the objects. And then, of course, it would let you purge it. All right. So they've really done quite a bit of work on the purge dialog box, which I'm hoping you're using because you like to have your drawings nice and neat and clean, right? The smaller the drawing, the faster it goes. All right, enough. Let's jump over. Let's take a look. Lynn, show me what you're talking about. So let's just jump over. This is AutoCAD 2020. Uh, I like to work with uh, the light background because I do so many presentations and I just find that it's easier for people to see it. Some of you are probably working with the dark background. That's, you know, whatever works for you. And I, so here I'm in a drawing. Let's say I want to do a purge, right? I want to clean up my drawing file. I can either type in purge or I can go to the manage tab on the ribbon and you'll see, remember we used to have to get to it from the application menu, right? By clicking on the big A. But now we can get to it from the ribbon, which I think is great. And here you will see, these are actually executing the same command, by the way, purge find non-purgeable items. You can tell that the person that put that tool into AutoCAD wanted to make sure it was front and center. Big. I'll just type it. I'm just going to go ahead and click on purge. And if you take a look at this, you will see that a few things. You'll see that uh, if, when you select objects, it gives you a nice big preview. I think that's that kind of comes in handy. Uh, you'll also see that we used to have zero length geometry and empty text objects 
those used to be combined together. So you had to purge both of them. Now you can decide which one you want. Actually, personally, I think you would want both of them anyway. We want it nice and neat and clean, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that wanted them separated. So as you go through here, once again, you have a nice visual of objects that you can purge, all right? So, but that's not really where the issue has been. It's been with these find non these non purgeable items, right? So we have this great tab that allows us to go over and take a look at things that we can't get rid of, right? Oh, I can't get rid of this, for example. And uh, what do we run into the most issues with? Layers. Yes, we do. Layers. So here you'll see these are the layers that I cannot get rid of. And let's say I wanted to get rid of this layer. I made a specific layer called evil layer because <laughs> it won't let me get rid of it. <laughs> because that's really, this is where we run into the most frustration with the purge command. And you'll see on here, it does give you a tip. It gave us a little bit of a tip before in the past. But uh, so here it says this layer cannot be purged because it's being used. And then it says, hey, check it out below. So I can move my cursor down here where it says objects. And it's like there's five points in my join file, say it isn't so. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Apparently I can't see them. And then it allows me to actually select the objects. So you can see it highlighted these points that are causing me grief, all right? So I could, at that point in time, I could just type in E for erase and then they'd be gone and then yay, I could go back in the purge dialog box and then it would let me get rid of that layer. At least that's what it's telling me, right? It's telling me that those, those five objects were a problem. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about with points, um, you know, you can insert points. Here's a point command right here, this guy right here. And the problem is, is that you have control over the way points look. If I go to utilities, you'll see there's a point style. And right now the point style is set to a dot. No wonder I couldn't see them. And yet those are actual objects inside of AutoCAD that will keep you from getting rid of layers. Uh, it could be worse, right? It could be set to this guy, which is, you know, nothing. <laughs> Have fun with your friends, right? Put a bunch of points on there, set the point style to nothing. They'll never find him unless they have 2020 and they can do that fabulous purge. And uh, I usually have them set to X's just so I can see them because I don't like not being able to see them. Points actually come in handy uh, for a variety of things. And uh, in case you've ever wondered what that node object snap was, oh yeah, that is to snap to points. I know you were wondering, now you know. So points can be used as markers, it can be used as a variety of things, but we're not talking about points, we're talking about the awesome purge command. So once again, if I go back to manage it, I just want you to see purge, non-purgeable items, those go to the same dialog box, it just opens different tabs, that's all. So you probably only need, I don't know why we needed two on there, but we, got, we have two. All right, let's go back over to our PowerPoint. So that's the purge redesign, which I absolutely love. And then DWG compare. So most of us have been in a situation at least once in our lives where we had two different drawings and we were trying to figure out what's the difference between the two drawings. It might even be two drawings with the same name, but they're just in different directories or they're, you know, on different networks or somewhere else, you know, they're, we have confusion, right? There was a problem. And you're trying to figure out, well, what's the difference between these two join files? So there have been a variety of ways that we've managed to get around this in the past. Maybe you used design review, BIM 360 has some capabilities there, or maybe you even used a different third-party application. But now with AutoCAD 2020, DWG Compare is built right in. They actually put it into 2019, but they've really enhanced it in 2020. So let's take a look. And the thing I love about it is it's super simple. I'm all about, I don't want to have to spend a lot of time learning something, right? You have, you have your job to do. And if it's too hard, then you're not going to use it. So I want to make sure that you use it. All right, so here I have a first floor plan version one. And let's say somewhere along the lines, I discovered that there's a version two. And I'm like, hey, I need to know what the difference is between these two. So I can go to the collaborate tab on the ribbon. Uh, this tab was actually put into AutoCAD 2019. I kind of chuckle that it's on the collaborate tab because if we were truly collaborating, we would not need DWG compare, let's face it, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and click DWG compare. Now, by default, it's going to it's going to use your current drawing, all right? So it I you'll notice that I I made the first floor plan active, and now it wants to know, okay, so what's the other drawing you want to compare it to? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to oh I don't have the where's my drawings there it is 
and I'm going to go ahead and compare it to first floor plan version two. All right, let's go open. Now, if you take a look at the screen, you'll see that I got, I have like a, a toolbar up here and I have, um, I mean, I have a variety of things going on, this little palette over here, and that's going to help me be successful with this drawing compare. So let me see what is going on. So you can see, I actually changed the color because red is such a mean color. <laughs> I just thought it was too violent for me. I changed the color, but you can go ahead and click on these and modify whatever color is going on. So what's not in the current drawing, that's everything in magenta, right? So that means that these objects are not in the current drawing and everything that's green is only in the current drawing. So it's not in version two, right? It's not in the other drawing file. So you'll, what's, and then what's this gray section? That means that those are exactly the same in both of the files. And you can turn these off. So I can actually click on this light bulb, right? Just like we have with layers and I can turn off everything that's common between the two drawing files. And now I'm basically just stuck with things that are different, right? So whatever you want, you can, you can turn any one of these off if you just wanna see what's only in the current drawing and so on and so forth. So you do have control over that. You also have control over the draw order. So you can click on here and it will decide now that the things that are not in the current drawing are on the top. So pretty straightforward. It is much more clear in 2020 than it was in 2019. And once again, you can control the color of these. So by default, it actually was set to red. I'll put it back to red. And now you'll see that it's red, red and green, like a stoplight. Now, I, as mentioned, have a like to use a light background. So the revision clouds are very hard to see because they're set to yellow. So I would probably click on here and switch it to something that's much easier to see. Here, we'll use our magenta. I'm gonna use that magenta one way or the other. So now the revision clouds are easier for you to see. So let's talk about these revision clouds. Obviously the revision clouds are gonna be about the things that are different, right? Between the two drawing files. Now it's currently set to rectangular, but man, that's just like one big, might as well just put one big revision cloud around the whole drawing if you ask me. It's not giving me enough information. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to and um, I'm gonna switch this from rectangular to polygonal. And I'm gonna just emphasize one more time that you say that word polygonal. It is not polygonal, which you will actually hear in the AutoCAD videos. Okay, it's not polygonal, it's polygonal. I was a math major, I know. <laughs> so I like this because it's a little bit easier to see. I can see, hey, look at that. I look at that. I happen to have a revision cloud right there. I didn't even notice that before. There's a change right in there. So I really love polygonal. You can control the size of them if you want to make them further away. You can see they're moving away from the objects. I don't think that's that important. And then there's a couple of filters on here. So I did not tell it to compare hatching, but you can turn that on and now it will compare the hatching. And I did have it compare the text. So it's up to you, you have control over exactly what it is comparing as far as hatch and text is concerned. All right, what else have we got? So we can actually click on these arrows and it will go through all of the different revision clouds, which I love. It'll make sure I don't miss anything like that guy right there, maybe I would have missed it. It makes it very, very clear what's going on in this drawing file, all right? So it jumps through, you can go forwards and backwards through all of the various changes, things that are different between the two drawing files. Up here, you will see a settings dialog, which hasn't been working for me for the last couple of, <laughs> of demos. I was crossing my fingers, thought it might work today. You should be able to click on that and it will basically tell you what all the color settings are. It basically shows you what is over here in this dialog, well, this, this palette over here, but it doesn't wanna work for me today. I click on it, it doesn't care. That's okay, we'll move on. And uh, what else have I got? Oh my gosh, I love this feature. This is probably the biggest change with DWG Compare in that you have the ability to import objects from the other drawing. So in this scenario, you can see that this box right here is not in the current drawing. I sure wish it was. I can go ahead and click on import objects and I can select this guy right here and then hit an enter. And now it's gray, right? Because now it is in this drawing, that means both the drawings are the same as far as that box is concerned. All right, it even shifted the revision cloud over a little bit because now it's just focusing on this as being different. So this is not in the other drawing, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. And what else have I got? Uh, well, you have the ability to turn this off 
you can toggle it on or off, that's up to you. So now you're back to normal, the way it was before, right? Let's bring it back. And this was uh, something that was in 2019, in that whenever you did a compare, it actually created a brand new drawing file that you could take a look at so that you could send off to somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here, and it is going to combine what we're looking at on the screen into a new file that you would just use for reference. Okay, you're not going to you're not going to update the objects in that file. You're just going to use it for reference. So like I said, you could email it off to somebody. So I'm going to do a continue. I like to keep those boxes on there of information so that you can read those. Uh, you, of course, will turn it off because you'll just find it annoying. So I have decided that I want to save it, compare first floor plan one versus first floor plan two. That's the way it's going to do it by default. I'm going to do a save. It's going to tell me I already have one because I've done this before. No problem. And check this out you will notice that it opened that drawing file for me, which is nice. I zoom back out. So this is the file that I could in fact then send to somebody else. Okay, nice the way they did that, nicely done. So very simple. You can actually pin this if you wanna keep it on here, but I just love that it's so very simple. So this is the new drawing, once again, that you would probably send off to somebody else as opposed to the drawing you were currently in, which you could in fact, if you wanted to, modify and make the changes to. When you're finished, you click on the arrow, you go back to the world as you knew it before. Nobody's ever any wiser. <laughs> there you go. They really did a great job with this. I think every feature that I talk about, I say they did a great job with, just a heads up on that. I mean, you know me, I don't always say that. So uh, I do like the way they did this. And this is just a nice visual of what those tools mean. <laughs> You'll see. The settings. Settings doesn't want to work for me. I don't know why. It doesn't matter because you can't change it in settings anyway. It's really just information. So I don't care that it doesn't open for me, but it did open at one time. I'm telling you it did. Okay, let's go. Moving on. The blocks palette. This is probably the biggest change inside of AutoCAD 2020 in that now when you go into the insert command, you don't get the insert dialog like you're used to. You get this really cool, powerful, easy to use blocks palette which contains all the blocks in your current drawing, all of the blocks that you recently have been working with, could have even have been in a different drawing, and you can choose another drawing anytime you want to, to uh, insert blocks as well, to use that as part of the blocks palette. So it makes it very easy for you to grab blocks from another drawing, which I really like. So this is another option. We all insert blocks different ways, and uh, this is just a nice, friendly, new way of doing it. I think it will be super helpful to people that are just learning AutoCAD. I think definitely be easy. So let's take a look. Let's go back over. Let's take a look. Here is the drawing that we are going to use for our blocks. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go to the insert tab on the ribbon. And hopefully you have been using these galleries You've clicked on insert and you've actually been taking advantage and using these galleries. For example, if I want to bring a plan in, you just can drag and drop them. If you take a look at the command line, you still have the other options available to you. You can change the base point. You can change the scale factor. You can rotate it, blah, blah, blah. But if you just want to drag and drop, it's super easy to do. Right. Now, if I type in I for insert, you will actually see that it takes me to the new blocks palette. What? So that's interesting. I need to move these go to meeting controls a little bit. Uh, so this is the blocks that I currently have in my drawing. It's the same concept, drag it and drop it into place. Easy enough. Maybe I need to put in this table, drag it, drop it into place. I mean, I want a stool, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, except for the part that my OSNAP was on and that still did not go in the right spot, but you guys get the idea. So let's take a look at what our options are down here as we're inserting. Now, I don't have rotation on, so I literally just dragged it and dropped it. It did not ask me for a rotation angle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I come down here and I click on rotation and now do it, I'm going to place, apparently a plant's going to go right there. You can see as I move my cursor around, it allows me to rotate it. That makes sense. You guys are smart. You would have figured that out without me. I'll escape out of there. I don't need a plant in the, is that the kitchen, <laughs> right in the middle of the kitchen. That would just get in the way while you were cooking, admit it. And I want you to also notice that there is an explode option on here, which is really easy to get to. So UCAD managers are going to have a heart attack. 
And I, I also noticed if I do a right click on any of these, that there is still the insert option. And then there's this insert and explode. So they are making it pretty simple for us to break rules and start to explode our blocks. So that's probably, I, I had to throw out one negative. So that would be my only negative here, but it's so easy to use these guys. I really do love that part of the block gallery. So let's take a look at the tabs. We have recent, these are the recent ones that I've been using uh, in, the, in the drawing files. And then here's other drawing. So this allows you once again to open up another drawing and use the blocks from the other drawing. How do you open the drawing? You click on the ellipses. Those are ellipses, the three dots on there, and then just simply select whatever drawing file you want to grab the blocks from, and it will populate them automatically. Now, some of your drawing files might have a lot of blocks in them, and if you think it's too many for you to wander through, you could uh, use a filter. Now, in order to use this filter, I did notice that you have to know your wildcards. You got going, what, what does that mean? So for example, if I type in a one there, it will show me all the blocks that start with a number one and they could end in anything, all right? As opposed to, let's see, what else have I got in here? There's a couple, is there a couple of sofas? If I said asterisk sofa, that means it could start with anything, but it has the word sofa after anything. Hopefully that makes sense to you. <laughs> Next time I'll do a whole webcast on, wildcards because unless you remember the DOS days you may not be an expert at wildcards and let's face it who remembers the DOS days okay. now so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I really don't want to use that filter I want to try this repeat placement oh wow I love this love 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 this and let me just make sure I'm out here I'm going to go ahead and oh uh, which one do I want let's grab I like this this is a cool shrub shrubbery the Monty Python bands and you'll see that it allows me just to Keep, oh, I got the rotation angle on. Oh, it's not as much fun when I have the rotation angle on. I'm going to click out of there. Let's get turn the rotation off. Otherwise, like I said, it's not as much fun. Let's try that again. Click, because then you just get to go. And besides, we're not going to be rotating this. It's completely symmetrical. So once again, super, super simple. And that stays on until you turn it back off. So if I were to come up here and I were to grab, where's that other plant? It was kind of cool looking too. A plant. You can go ahead and grab those guys too. And you'll see it keeps repeating because I didn't turn that back off. You can see I'm an I'm amazing at placing plants and shrubs. <laughs> so, super friendly, very easy to get to. I also want to show you if you are somebody who uses the ribbon, if you click on insert there, you will see two options. These also send you to the block palette. Recent blocks will take you to the block palette, and you'll also see that block. So you see that it opened the recent tab, right? And blocks from other joins opens the last tab. All right, so super easy to use. Now, some of you are big fans of the standard insert command. Not to worry, there is still a classic insert that will open the last version of the insert dialog box for those of you who are really into that. So if, if it really matters to you, you could redefine it so that it's actually using classic inserts. So not to worry. Uh, I think you should try this blocks palette first before you do that. And uh, just so you know, if you have a script file that you've written, it's still going to use the classic insert command. You don't have to freak out thinking, oh, no, now it's not, those aren't going to work anymore. You don't need to worry about that, at least not yet. And here's some other commands. We always know that you can access the command line version of insert right with a dash in front of it. That certainly hasn't changed. And blocks palette will officially open the blocks palette if you do want to put that in a script file and you can close it. You can also put that in a script file. And then if for some reason you care about the number of blocks that are displayed in the recent tab, because believe me, that could get pretty big as you are inserting blocks, right? You have a system variable where you can tell it that you want it to truncate it after a certain number. So something for you to think about. So that is the land of blocks palette. Super easy to use once again. Uh, I, I think everybody can figure it out and hopefully that'll help you insert your library symbols a lot faster. Okay. Quick measure. This is for you guys who are, have to check join files. I mean, technically we all have to check our own join files, but for those of you who spend time checking other people's join files, you are gonna be so happy about this. So the quick measure basically just populates your join file with a whole bunch of dimensions as you move your cursor around so that you can very quickly check for angles and values and distances and things like that. And I can talk about it or I can show it to you. And believe me, it's better if I just show it to you. So let's jump back over one more time. 
And I think I will use this drawing in here. Yeah, let's do that. And let's zoom over just a little bit. So you do want to zoom in. Otherwise, you will be overwhelmed <laughs> with information. <laughs> Discovered that one. If you go to the Home tab on the ribbon, underneath Measure, this executes the Measure Geom command, right? Not the Measure command, but the Measure Geom command. Here is the new Quick option. And as you move your cursor around, you will see that it tells you a variety of information. It will share with you angles. If I come down here, you'll see it gives me the angle in here, 107 degrees. If I come over here, it'll show me 91 degrees. See, that's not, you think it would be 90, but it's 91 degrees. Anytime I go, like if I move inside of this box, you're gonna see a variety of right angles. Of course, that means that those are 90 degree angles. I can probably get them in here as well. Nope, doesn't wanna give it to me in there. Um, but you'll see a variety of places as you zoom around that you get these little uh, 90 degree marks as you're moving your cursor around, okay? So you have the ability to find out angles, a bunch of different distances. It's pretty powerful. So this should help save you some time, especially once again, if you are checking other people's drawing files. So you can see there's an angle of 105. I have a dimension up there. And you can also see why you would want to zoom in so you don't get attacked by quick measure. <laughs> so, how do you turn it off? You can just hit an escape. Very simple. I would be super tempted if I was constantly checking drawing files to add this to the uh, to the quick access toolbar. It's very easy to do that, right? Add to the quick access toolbar if you're using it a lot. Um, or I would be tempted to make a control key combination out of it so that I could toggle it on and off anytime I wanted to. But all options for you. Very, very powerful. Hey, let's turn off our blocks palette. Okay, back over to the PowerPoint. Here we go. So there have been some performance improvements. You'll definitely see performance improvements when you are installing the software. I noticed that right away. And if you have a solid state hard drive, no surprise, that's gonna be a lot faster as well. You should notice some performance improvements when you do things like save. I feel like those are a lot faster as well. And uh, it's, so that's good. As time goes on, they tightened this release up and they're making sure that it's faster, which is good. And they have also done some work on the new dark theme for those of you who are using the dark colors. And I will say, in case you have not converted to the dark theme, it is a lot easier on your eyes. That is one of the main reasons they put that in there. It's been proven that that gray color is the easiest and avoids eye strain as much as possible. So something for you to think about, we are staring at AutoCAD all day often. And if you fall under that category and your eyes are really tired at the end of the day, I would suggest to you that you try the dark theme and see if it makes it any easier on you. So they did do some work, some work on it to make sure that it was a little more clear whether you were in the drawing editor versus the ribbon. And also they tried to make the icons a little bit sharper. And you'll also see, and I, whether you're using the light theme or the dark theme, that when you go to context sensitive uh, tabs, like you type in hatch, for example, you know, it automatically uh, pops up this contextual tab for hatching. And it hasn't always been clear to people as to what's going on there. Where did this tab come from? You'll also find it with M text, right? And so now it's very, very clear, regardless of what theme you're using, that you are using a context sensitive tab. So I think that's really, really important. And then this was like one of my favorite features in uh, 2019. <laughs> and so it's still valid today is yay. They updated the icons for trim and extend because how many times have we not paid attention and we grabbed the wrong one because they used to look so similar. Now I have a pair of scissors, which makes me really happy, which incidentally it used to be a long time ago, a pair of scissors. So some people actually made their own scissors. <laughs> I don't know if you did or not, but <laughs> Come on, that's the worth of the, that's worth the price of upgrading right there. So you don't keep hitting the wrong tool. Come on, I know it's true. And you can also access your drawing files from Dropbox. You'll actually see on uh, my computer. I'll even show you. She says it didn't want to go. If you go into open or whatever, and I always type things in, don't be like me, be better than me. But you can see I have Dropbox over here. I have OneDrive over here. So uh, there are a lot of capabilities here for you to add that, remember add your current folder, you would just go to Dropbox and add your current folder. It's very simple and straightforward, which is nice. I'm going to cancel that out. And since so many of us are actually saving our files up in the cloud, because I don't like to fill up my hard drive and let AutoCAD files can get big. 
What else have we got? Let's talk about the specialized tool sets. So, I mean, I could not believe it when they included all those verticals in AutoCAD. That's crazy. Up until then, we had to pay extra for them. And I think that was the price of, of making sure you were, you were uh, a subscriber and that you were up to date right then and there. So we'll talk about these. You know, I know that everybody on the phone, they are all in different industries. And I, I'm gonna talk about the different tool sets that as they relate to you. This is a list of the ones that were included. Uh, the last one you see on their raster design, I'm telling you that's the top secret tool that they included. I couldn't believe it when they added that in too. I bet you a lot of you don't even know what raster design is. You're like, what the heck is that? Uh, you're gonna want it. So I'll. I'm saving that one to the to the end of the specialized tool sets. But let's take a look. So the goal behind these is that they are specific for your industry. They've been fine-tuned specifically for your industry with some amazing workflows and some amazing automations. And they also come with big libraries. So you don't have to make the libraries yourself. You're like, darn it, I already did. <laughs> so I bet you they haven't made them all. And this would allow you access to some pretty amazing symbol libraries. And they also work really well with uh, some of the other Autodesk products. For example, you might be using Autodesk Inventor and you might decide that you want to do the detail work or the 2D work in AutoCAD Mechanical. So it, it, it has really nice workflows among the other products as well. So let, let's, let's talk about how to do this. So when you, you upgrade AutoCAD 2020 and you are a subscriber, you will have access to all of these tool sets. So it sounds when I say like a tool set, like it's just another tab in the ribbon. It is not. It is an entirely separate program. Raquel, I can hear you typing. Just letting you know. We can hear you. Ooh, I'm going to unmute myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I was like, what was that? What was that? So uh, pretty impressive that uh, they included all of these. These are, once again, are totally separate programs. These are big programs. You do not want to install them all unless, I don't know, you just have the biggest hard drive ever. You're only gonna install the ones, of course, that have to do with you. Let's talk about uh, probably the most popular AutoCAD architecture. I like to start off with that one first. That's the one that was the, used by more people than any of the other verticals, except for maybe uh, Civil 3D, which is not included, incidentally, in the specialized tool sets. So what's up with AutoCAD architecture? Well, it comes with 8,000 symbols, so blocks, intelligent blocks. And if you are drawing floor plans and whatnot in AutoCAD, you really need to take a look at AutoCAD architecture. This will get you away from doing the polylining and the offsetting and then the putting the door symbol in and trimming and all that stuff that takes so much time and is really tedious. That is all completely automated in AutoCAD architecture. And in AutoCAD architecture, uh, it will also draw for you in 3D, just like you see this building right here in 3D, so much easier than trying to do it in standard AutoCAD. For example, you put a wall in, you're gonna tell it the thickness of the wall, you're gonna tell it how tall you want that wall, you know, the, the height of that wall, the width and the height, and then it draws it in 3D for you. And it's super, super intelligent. Now, I often say, I do a lot of presentations on making the move to BIM, making the move to Revit from AutoCAD. And I will tell you, it's so much easier making the move from AutoCAD architecture to Revit than it is from AutoCAD, especially if you're all in for the software, where you are really taking advantage of the automations and the workflows, like using Project Navigator inside of AutoCAD architecture, for example. So, Maybe you're not quite ready to make the move to Revit. Maybe you're hesitating. I strongly recommend you try AutoCAD architecture. I call it like a half step to BIM and it'll be easier when you do make that move. It's gonna be a lot easier. You're gonna have a different mindset. So give it a try. Why not? Why not give it a try? So what else have we got? We also have AutoCAD Mechanical for you guys who are in the mechanical industry. And once again, as I mentioned to you before, you might decide that you want to do your 2D documentation from your 3D solid model, and that can easily be done inside of AutoCAD Mechanical. It does a great job at balloons, at bill of materials. It has much better mechanical dimensioning tools than standard AutoCAD. It has some impressive automations that will actually save you quite a bit of time. And we have AutoCAD Electrical, 65,000 symbols that you don't have to make yourself. And it does wire numbering and component 
tagging and coil and contact cross-referencing. It does all kinds of amazing things. It's a very intelligent product. Definitely, if you are in the electrical industry, you should definitely give it a try. And then Map3D, I used to work with somebody who used to say Map3D was the top secret AutoCAD that nobody knows about and it's super powerful. And uh, you, because you had the ability to have more than one person working in the same file at the same time, which was pretty darn crazy. And I'm not talking about XRefs. So it's a really impressive program for those of you who are in the world of GIS, right? And then MEP, you'll find that MEP is once again, no surprise specific for those of you who are doing MEP engineering. It comes with a robust library, over 10,000 intelligent mechanical, electrical, plumbing, H HVAC, all that good stuff. And uh, it also has some amazing automated workflows that you should take a look at. So definitely, if you're in the MEP industry, you should really be using that particular tool set. And then Plant 3D, you're doing PNIDs. So many people in the plant industry are using AutoCAD. This just kicks it up a notch and helps make it easier for you to get your jobs done faster. So very, very powerful. Okay, this is, I said, was the secret sauce. This was the cool <laughs> the product that everybody can use. I have yet to find anybody that hasn't had in their lifetime a time and place where they could have used raster design. All right, here's the scenario. You're in the office and you have this paper drawing. Even if it's an AutoCAD drawing file, let's say it's so old, you don't know where that DWG file is. You don't have it anywhere. It's probably on a floppy disk somewhere. Who can use a floppy disk anymore? <laughs> so, nevertheless, or what if it's a drawing that was that was hand drawn, right? It's that's how old some of you are working on some pretty old architecture, and you need to bring it into AutoCAD. So you can scan it, right? You can bring it in as an underlay, but wow, you'd almost better from starting from scratch. Since it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like exported out as a PDF from an actual AutoCAD drawing in the last three releases, you're probably just going to be end up drawing it from scratch. Well, the cool thing with raster design is you can scan those files, you can bring them in, and raster design is going to help you convert them to actual DWG objects. It recognizes text, it recognizes lines and arcs and circles, um, which by the way, it will also recognize a great big round coffee stain, that would be a circle. Or if your paper's seriously folded, you might get a line down the middle of your drawing file, just a heads up for you there. But it does some pretty amazing things. It does, uh, I mean, it just does a great job at image editing and cleanup, it despeckles, it does, uh, it can mirror, it uh, does some rubber sheeting. It's a very impressive program. And I can't give it a, a, enough kudos. So you should give that a try. And if you're a subscriber, a lot of you already have this, right? So you definitely want to give it a try. So just as an example, AutoCAD versus AutoCAD architecture. You're doing a floor plan, as I mentioned to you before. You're going to draw your polyline. You're going to offset it. And then if you are doing 3D, which you probably aren't in standard AutoCAD, but if you were, you would have to extrude it to a specific height. You insert your window block and then you got to trim it all out, right? Okay, so that's a lot of steps. Inside of AutoCAD architecture, you're going to give it the information for how you want your wall to, to be, how tall, how wide, and you're going to go ahead and just draw that. And then you're going to select the window that you want. You're going to tell it that how big is this window. And then you just lock it right into place. It trims everything for you. And you can insert a whole bunch of windows or doors all at the same time, and it trims everything out. And it's just so much more efficient, definitely. So if you get paid by the hour, don't upgrade. <laughs> and then there's some studies on here. I'm going to go through these really, really quickly. Uh, I'm not a big fan of PowerPoints with lots of text. This was provided by Autodesk, and it has some really good information in it. So I'm going to let it slide. It's basically what you can see here is that there is a lot to gain from a productivity standpoint between basic generic AutoCAD and if you're doing auto, if you're in architecture space and AutoCAD architecture. So you can see here, especially uh, when it comes to things like elevations and sections, those are, are, can, are almost automated inside of AutoCAD architecture. And as you're pulling them off of the model, that should save you a lot of time. It's not as much as Revit, but <laughs> it's a step in the right direction. And then here's an example of electrical, which apparently it almost does your job for you. <laughs> I didn't do the study, I don't know. It seems a little over the top, but I think the point is you will definitely save a lot of time. And then AutoCAD Mechanical, you can also see. 
some pretty impressive time savings, right? I'm not going to I'm not going to read this out loud. You guys can read. All right, AutoCAD web and mobile. All right. We're on the go. We're not always sitting behind a computer. Maybe you feel like you're always sitting behind a computer, but you might be in a situation where you're going out to a site and you want to take your drawing files with you and you don't want to make a paper drawing because you want to save, you don't want to print it. You, you want to save some trees. Besides, it's such a hassle carrying them around. Or uh, you might be in a scenario where you're in somebody's office and they don't have AutoCAD and you just need to pull up an AutoCAD drawing file and maybe check a couple things or make a couple of edits. So let's talk about that. First off, there's the AutoCAD web app. And if you take a look at the PowerPoint, I want you to see the URL. It's web.autocad.com. And you guys can all try this, uh, whether you've upgraded or a subscriber or anything like that. You can definitely access it. Uh, you just will be somewhat limited in what you can and cannot do. So web.autocad.com. So I'm in somebody's office and they don't have AutoCAD and I need to make some changes. So I am going to go to, oh, did I close it? Lynn, I did close it. All right. See, let's see. I did close. Oh, I didn't close it. I feel better now. <laughs> I was like, I try to set everything all up. So you guys don't have to sit and watch me search for files or do anything. I thought, surely I did not close this. This is web.autocad.com. And I already opened a file of a very sophisticated drawing. I'm a big dog fan, so I felt the need to open up my dog house plans. This is actually a sample drawing. It's not my dog house. I don't even have a dog house. But nevertheless, you can see, you can do some basic things here and go to this layout. I can turn layers on and off. As I go through here, for example, maybe I wanna turn the dimension layer off. And you have a variety of tools. Now I want you to look at the tools. Drawing tools, not too many. Annotation. Once again, not too many, but you can do like revision clouds. You can do some dimensions and measurements. And then there's some basic modification tools. This is not AutoCAD by any stretch of the imagination. If you decide you're gonna use this to actually do a bunch of drawing and editing, you could lose your mind <laughs> because it's you're used to many, many, many more tools. But I would just definitely say in a pinch for sure. Plus this is a cloud application. And believe me, the folks at Autodesk are gonna continue to develop this so that someday it's gonna have a whole boatload of tools that you will feel more at home actually using. So keep an eye on this for sure. It's gonna become more and more powerful and you'll be able to do more and more with it. So, uh, so many applications of course are moving to the cloud. So let's go back over to our PowerPoint. And the mobile app. This is why I mentioned to you before, you're gonna go on site. Even if you don't have an internet connection, it doesn't matter. You can make sure that you have uh, saved your drawing files to your, AutoCAD, your Autodesk account, and you can access them on site, even if you don't have, because oftentimes when we're on site, we may not have an internet connection, right? And you also have the ability to do all kinds of things, like check your drawing file out. So you get on site and you're checking it, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that's not accurate. Or you can uh, mark it up, right? You One of the cool things about your tablet, right, is they have GPS built into them. So you can actually open your AutoCAD drawing file on site and you can stand in a specific spot and you can have that specific pot, spot in your drawing file and you can drop a marker so we'll know exactly where you're at. That's crazy. So then as you walk around the site, it will know exactly where you are in the drawing file. See, that's crazy technology. And you can take any markups that you make here or in the web app and you can bring those into AutoCAD. And I believe, is it the next slide it is? So you actually have two tools on the quick access toolbar, which you'll see highlighted here in this yellow box. There's a open from uh, AutoCAD web and mobile, and then there's save to AutoCAD web and mobile. So you do have the capabilities of going both directions here. So should you go to the, out in the field and do a bunch of markups, you don't want to have to, in turn, once again, print that out. You want to be able just to bring to open that file and do some work with it, right? So there were some CAD managers who did not want these tools on the quick access toolbar. That would made it just a little bit too easy for people to grab. And I also think some people were actually saving and not paying attention. And, you know, it was a different kind of save than what they thought was going to happen. So the CAD manager control utility now allows you to disable that. You can see right here on the screen, this AutoCAD web and mobile, you can turn that off if you want to. 
you know, I don't recommend it, but you can, if you're a CAD manager, I totally get why you would need to do that. And you'll also see an issue in the past that it did not include the XREFs. Well, now the XREFs will go with it, which is super important, right? Some of us open drawing files, there's nothing left in it if the XREFs aren't there. And many of us live in the land of XREFs. So once again, these are just more options available to you to help you be successful, right? So we talked about the latest enhancements. I showed you not all, but the I would say the top new features inside of AutoCAD 2020. We talked about those amazing specialized tool sets. That's where you're going to really see a huge jump in productivity. Definitely give those a try. And then the AutoCAD web and mobile apps. So on that note, I want to thank you so much for joining me. And uh, here's my email if you have any additional questions. And if you are on Twitter, I'm a big fan of Twitter. If you have no life like me, feel free to follow me. I'm always sharing tips up there. And on that note, I am going to hand it back over to Raquel. We have questions, Lynn. What a great presentation. Thank you. That's why we love your presentations. Oh, but thank you. We have some questions. And one of okay. the questions is... Hopefully I know the answers. <laughs> well, hopefully, right? How do you do a block replace insert with the new insert palette? Well, you can still do everything that you did before. Uh, you can still do everything that you did before. The, the, after you do the block replace, everything will update in the palette. Remember, the palette is really just listing whatever blocks you have in your join file. So that's an express tool. It might, have, it might have, did it grow up and become a real life AutoCAD command? I'm thinking it's still an express tool, but I could be totally wrong there. Um, but you, so you can still use block replace. Um, you can still use design center. So that, I didn't mention that. I know we have a lot of fans of design center. That's still there. There are many different avenues to do anything inside of AutoCAD. And so you still have all that, all those tools available to you. It's not taking anything away. It's just adding in another one. Great. So no, that was another question. Another question was, did they get rid of Design Center? So you just answered that other question. Yeah, Design Center. Is still, yeah. It still Excellent. lives and breathes. I know a lot of people love it. I, I, and if you don't know Design Center, that's a really powerful, powerful tool to take a look at. Maybe we will mention it next week. Next week webcast yeah all right so the other question is can you compare more than one drawing at a time yeah not not good question not yet uh someday maybe but not quite yet so right now it's just you compare one drawing to one drawing and then i guess you would make the changes you needed to make and then you would have to compare that third drawing and so on so only one at a time Okay, excellent. Thank you, Lynn. Keep keep the questions coming, guys. Okay, there's another one. The blocks palette. Does one set different units from imperial and metric drawings? And will blocks only come in the current layer? I guess there's two questions there. Two for one. Blocks, blocks will come in on the current layer unless when you define the block, you gave it a specific layer to land on. Uh, if as long as the block is set to by layer, it's gonna come. That's a good question, by the way is going to come in on the current layer. And the other part of that was... He was talking about imperial and metric drawing. Those oh, block so it's it's not going to it's, yeah, it's not going to convert for you. So if you had your blocks set in, in uh, metric and then you dropped them into a drawing that was in feet and inches in imperial, it's not going to be smart enough to convert that for you. You'd act actually need to have two sets of blocks there for... Does one set yeah. different units from imperial metric drawing? So he has to set each one. Well, you'd have to have two sets of blocks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> that's the right answer, but not it what he wanted. Not, to, be. not what he or she wanted to hear. <laughs> okay, guys. Any other questions? It's now on on on, on not talk forever. No, I'm just kidding. Never, Next hour, never. <laughs> I, ended, no, I ended a little early. Today. It wasn't as chatty. What Can you like? install tool sets after they install? I don't know exactly what that means. After the normal AutoCAD install? Yeah, absolutely. You can install those tool sets anytime you want. You just need to pull up the uh, Autodesk. Uh, the, Autodesk account, the AutoCAD Autodesk account. Yeah, the, uh, what's it called? But yeah, so you know how you have the AutoCAD, the Autodesk desktop program there. You can install it anytime you want. So you can work on regular AutoCAD and then six months down the road, you could say, well, I'm going to try that AutoCAD architecture and you can install that and you can install raster design. Incidentally, raster design does run inside of AutoCAD. I should tell you that. 
it runs right inside of AutoCAD. It's unlike the other tool sets, which are totally separate programs. Raster Design does run inside of your AutoCAD, uh, but as another tab, it's like another tab on the ribbon. But yeah, anytime you want, you don't need to do it right up front. You can just go back to the desktop. I can't manager. I for some, I know that's not right either. I can't think of the right name. Someone's out there going, they know the right name, Lynn. But uh, nevertheless, you can do it anytime you want. Excellent. Well, you Good have question. a lot of followers. Yeah, great question. This one is saying, thank you, Lynn. See you at AU. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Uh, that's sweet. Yes. All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Lynn. And uh, we'll see. Uh, I just want to say that we are working on future presentations with Lynn. Uh, so keep uh, keep tuned. Thank you, Chris. Like thank, fun. Yeah. I can't wait. thank you, Philip. For, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Chelsea, for every for all your questions. Have a great thank day, you. everybody. Bye. Bye bye.